Good morning, and welcome on this glorious fourth Sunday of Advent. We are glad you're here, whether you're in the sanctuary or listening on the radio or watching live stream, it is good to be with you to worship God. Our service is a little different today as we're doing a kind of a smaller version of Lessons and Carols. Uh, we'll do the full version on Christmas Eve. Uh, so you're just going to want to follow along. I know sometimes standing and sitting as appropriate is a challenge for some of you. So just follow the bulletin, and I promise you, you'll be okay. Uh, remember, we are practicing COVID protocols. Uh, they're in the green sheet. A and I want to spend a little bit of time talking about those today. Uh, as we prepare for the Christmas season, uh, I would ask us all to be more attentive to our safety. Uh, we've had some events recently here at the church uh, where people are ignoring our protocols. Uh, most of those folks aren't our members, so I'm not worried so much about today, but we'll probably see some of those folks at Christmas. If you haven't been vaccinated, I would strongly recommend you not come back to church until mid-January. Um, it's your call, but I just, we're going to see a spike, and people are going to see strange people, and people, strange people are going to be coming here at Christmas, and it's just going to be a, a viral mess. And so I just want us to be careful. I want us to get through the Christmas season and hopefully on the other side without any significant issues. So uh, if you haven't been vaccinated, uh, maybe watch us on YouTube um, or listen to us on the radio uh, and come back after things kind of settle out. I, en enough said. I, I hope you understand why. It's just my concern for our congregation. I, I don't want anybody to get sick. Um, and we are going to see an increase over the next few weeks, I'm sure. So uh, on, on a good note, uh, let me say thank you for your pledges. Uh, we have 151, and we're almost to 710,000, which puts us over where we were last year uh, in terms of our budgeted pledges. And so we are grateful for your commitment and support. Um, we're opening our Sunday morning nursery. Uh, we could use someone to coordinate our caregivers. We do have people willing to uh, be in the nursery with our, our children. We just need somebody to make sure they're scheduled on the appropriate Sundays. The, the last thing we need is four caregivers coming up on one Sunday and none on, on another. So if you can help us coordinate, that would be great. Uh, we have a new Logos coordinator. Um, her name is Margie. Uh, you might recognize her. Uh, but the session has contracted her uh, between January and May. Uh, if we get a DCE before then, Margie will definitely step aside. Uh, but she's going to help us out so that we can bring Logos back. We really want to bring Logos back, full two hours, dinner, all, all of that. So uh, we're moving forward there. Friends, we need your annual reports. If you're an elder or head of a group that normally submits an annual report, please get it in this week uh, so we can start assembling that um, document. And finally, you can get your last-minute Christmas stocking stuffers at the coffee closet. Uh, there's nuts and cheese and chocolate. Uh, I promise you, uh, Santa is one of our best customers. Uh, please check the green sheet for more good news. Uh, friends, God is good. All the time. Keep watch, for the one who brings peace is coming. We wait in anticipation for Christ. We wait for God's revealing of joy. Remain alert. Love is coming to dwell on us. Hope will draw near to
Our first lesson is from Genesis 3, 8 to 15, and 22 to 23. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, the woman whom you gave to me to be with me, she gave me the fruit from the tree and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, what is this that you have done? The woman said, the serpent tricked me and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Then the Lord God said, See, the man has become one with us, knowing good and evil, and now he might reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from which he was taken. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with the joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. 
for the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Our next scripture is from Luke 2, 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. 
he went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them.
A reading from the Gospel of Matthew. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go, and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Invite the children to come forward.
Good morning. Good morning. I love that I have to sit between the pews because we have so many children on one side and so many children on the other. It is so good to see all of you. Can you hear me down there? Okay. Good, good. Yeah. Well, it does help to have the speaker. That's right, uh, the microphone. I, I just want to check in this morning. How are you doing? How are you feeling? You're feeling good? You were sick, but now you're better. I'm glad to hear that. But you're, you're all feeling good? You know Christmas is coming. Were you aware of that? Six days? How many hours? No, I'm, I'm pulling your leg a little bit. No, s seriously, I wanted to check in because yes, Christmas is coming and we're all excited about that. We, we decorate the house, we get the Christmas tree, we go buy presents. Have you had to go out Corridor G at all? I'm glad. And Santa's coming. There's a lot happening. Yes. No. Do you think they were telling her about the baby Jesus? Yes. Wonderful. Okay. There is a lot going on at Christmas, isn't there? Yes. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Do you know our family? We don't put baby Jesus in the manger. Until Christmas, you're right. We hide baby Jesus, and then on Christmas Day, we put him in the manger. And, and so that way, our cat won't get him. <laughs> there is a lot going on at Christmas. And I wanted to check in, because sometimes we feel really good and really happy at Christmas. Sometimes we feel really sad. Sometimes we feel scared or discouraged or alone. Sometimes there's just so much going on, it drives us. Yeah, yeah, it does that. And, and, and I just wanted to let you know that whatever you're feeling, it's okay. It's okay if you're not happy at Christmas. It's okay if you're really happy at Christmas. It's okay if you're a little nervous at Christmas. It's okay if things are really calm and peaceful. It's okay. And that's really the good news that we get at Christmas. The reason it's okay, the reason all of our feelings are going to be okay, is because God is with us. Jesus comes at Christmas, and he is with us. So when we're scared, Jesus is with us. When we're happy, Jesus is with us. When we're feeling alone, Jesus is with us. Whatever we're feeling, always remember, because of Christmas, Jesus is with us. Now, I may see some of you, I may not see some of you, but I hope that you all have a blessed Christmas. I know... Well, and that's a good place to be, Catherine. Would you join me in prayer? And people, I have been forgetting lately to do it the way you do it, so I'm going to try to do your tradition again because I absolutely love it. I just forget sometimes. So if you kind of repeat after me, we'll do call and response. Most gracious God, we give you thanks for the love that embraces us at Christmas. As we wait for your return and the fulfillment of your kingdom, remind us that in good times and bad, you are with us and our lives are always in your care. In Jesus' name, Amen. You all have a blessed week, and I'll see you next year, maybe some of you.
Whenever I think of Mary at Christmas time, the first image that comes to mind is a small porcelain figurine my mother has. Her robe is blue, but her face, hair, and everything else about her are smooth, shiny, and white. More of a grayish white, but beautiful, fragile, and pure nonetheless. She's kneeling in a simple nativity, flanked by a couple of cherubs with their delicate wings. There's a donkey and with Joseph standing by and, and the baby Jesus in a manger. I'm not sure why that Mary stands out for me. It's hardly realistic. In its presentation of Mary, who was anything but fragile and white, perhaps it was one of the first portrayals of Mary I saw as a child. Maybe it's the simplicity of the figurine. The smooth, cool porcelain is comfortable to the touch. Some might say I'm a product of my white patriarchal Protestant culture, which too often women were idealized as fragile and pure. Maybe they're right. All I know is of all the creches I've seen, hand-carved, painted, large and small, wood, plastic, porcelain, and clay, we have more than I can count in our home. Of all the creches I've seen, this is the one I remember first. This small porcelain Mary, beautiful, fragile, and pure. If you Google Virgin Mary, there are thousands of images. Most emphasize her holiness with golden halos, rings of stars, or, or beams of light radiating around her. There are images of the heavenly Mary looking down from the clouds or, or surrounded by angels. There, there's the motherly Mary holding the baby Jesus with various backgrounds, religious and royal, but remarkably few scenes from the stable. Many are political. There's immigrant Mary, accompanied by ICE officers with zip ties binding her hands. There's a painting of Mary and Jesus, where their halos are rainbow colored. There's a Make America Pray Again poster, where the Blessed Virgin is draped with an American flag. There is a black and white lithograph of a militant Mary standing on a dead serpent with her fist raised and verses from the Magnificat encircling her like a wreath. Cast down the mighty, fill the hungry, lift the lowly. My favorite image of Mary comes from the 14th century Tameth Book of Hours. Are you familiar with that? A Book of Hours is a devotional book from the late Middle Ages and Renaissance. So this goes back a while. In the Tameth Book of Hours, there's an illumination of Mary with her crown and, and royal robes wrestling the devil to the ground by his horns. Behind her is an angel, maybe Gabriel, holding the baby Jesus. You have to believe when Mary saw this monstrous beast, she turned to the Gabriel and said, hold my baby, I got this. Now, now that's a Theodicus, a God-bearer I can embrace. I'm not sure there's another woman in history portrayed in as many different ways as Mary. Who was this woman set apart by God to birth the Savior of the world? Who is she to us? Why do we picture her in so many different ways? Is Mary the fragile, pure porcelain figurine? Is she this ferocious feminist wrestling the devil to the ground, punching him in the nose, 
feeding the hungry, lifting up the lowly, fighting on behalf of the poor and oppressed. Is she an ordinary young woman who, feeling the pains of childbirth, nursing her baby at her breast, fearing for his life and weeping at his death? Is she an ordinary young woman who shows us what it means to live by faith? I would say Mary is all these things and more. But above all, Mary is the bearer of God's love in the flesh. Luke tells us, Mary is a virgin living in Galilee, engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The angel Gabriel greets Mary. Hail, O favored one, the Lord is with you. Mary is perplexed by the angel's greeting. Such a greeting might be given to a king or a queen, but she's a mere carpenter's wife-to-be. Gabriel proceeds to tell her that she is to be the mother of God's child, which leads to more confusion. How can this be? since I am a virgin. Fair question. We may wonder the same thing. But Luke isn't challenging biology here. Luke's making a point about Jesus' birth. God's been a midwife for a while. Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, Hannah, and Elizabeth all women who couldn't conceive until God intervened. Jesus' birth is something new altogether. Gabriel says to Mary, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Sound familiar? In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void. Perhaps not unlike a womb. The earth was a formless void. Darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. As the Spirit of God swept over chaos and created new life from nothing, God's Spirit hovers over Mary. God's divine power creates a baby in Mary's womb. A baby who is the beginning of God's new creation. When Mary hears this good news, that she is to be the mother of God, she responds in faith. Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Mary, the mother of God, is bringing salvation to the earth, giving birth to God's new creation by grace through faith. The Magnificat, Mary's song, is a song of hope, celebrating the birth of God's new creation. Like the song of Miriam sung on the shores of the Red Sea or the song of Hannah sung as she dedicated her son Samuel, the first great prophet of God. Or the song of Zechariah sung at the birth of John the Baptist. Mary's song is sung in response to God's great work of salvation, the birth of God's new creation. God has claimed and blessed Mary's life. She shall be the mother of God's son. When this good news proclaimed by Gabriel sinks in, when a visit to Elizabeth confirms her blessing, when the shock wears off, Mary breaks forth in song. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, 
for God has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. A young, lowly Palestinian girl, Mary is given a part in God's great work of salvation. For this, she gives praise and thanks to God. For this, she sings a song of hope. Beloved, this is the good news of Christmas. A voice cries out, God makes a way in the wilderness, a path through the chaos. The valleys are raised and the mountains made low. The uneven ground is level and the rough places are a plain. The glory of the Lord is revealed. The mouth of the Lord has spoken. And God's new creation has begun. God blesses Mary and all the world with the birth of her son, Jesus, God's new creation, God's love in the flesh. Before Mary breaks forth into song about the birth of God's new creation, about the birth of God's love in the flesh, Luke tells us, with haste, Mary takes off to visit Elizabeth. For Luke, this is an opportunity to confirm what the angel has said to Mary about the child in her womb. But is this why Mary went so quickly? To connect the theological dots between John the Baptist and Jesus? Mary needed a friend. Elizabeth and Mary are cousins. Elizabeth is also expecting, but she's older than Mary and married. Mary is a young, marginalized, single mother. Some of you can imagine how frightened she must have been. How could she tell Joseph what would people say? Where could she go? How could she care for a baby? Could it be Mary just needed some assurance? Not that the angel's words were true, but that everything would be okay. That she and the baby would be okay. In this vulnerable, chaotic moment, in the lives of these two women, Luke offers us a beautiful example of what love in the flesh looks like. Mary and Elizabeth have the gift of each other offering care, support, and understanding in this chaotic, vulnerable time in each of their lives, Mary and Elizabeth embody for each other God's love in the flesh. On Christmas Eve, we will gather again. Some of us will be here with family and friends. Some of us will be traveling for Christmas. We will be with those we love and those we tolerate. The crowds, the chaos, and the craziness will seem overwhelming. Even among family and friends, there will be moments we feel like a stranger in a strange land. Our emotions will be stretched beyond measure Grief and joy, anxiety and peace, disappointment and hope, and everything in between. But everything will be okay. God's got this. 
Beloved, this Christmas, be mindful. As much as we may feel the need to escape in the music, the food, the drink, and the memories, be present. Who near you needs an encouraging word, an act of kindness? Who could use a helping hand? Who waits at your door to be welcomed and accepted for who they are? Who is looking to be loved, not judged? In this chaotic, vulnerable time, who needs you to be the bearer of God's love? in the flesh. Beloved Mary was blessed among women because she bore God's love in the flesh. We are blessed when we do the same for each other. Thanks be to God.
join me in the affirmation of faith. The one sufficient revelation of God is Jesus Christ, the Word of God incarnate, to whom the Holy Spirit bears unique and authoritative witness through the Holy Scriptures, which are received and obeyed as the Word of God written. As we prepare to offer our prayers and lives to God, we are grateful. The 17 Christian Aid Ministries missionaries have returned home, and we pray for their continued well-being and emotional and physical recovery. We continue our prayers for our siblings in Arkansas, Missouri, Illinois, Tennessee, Kentucky, as they try to put their lives and communities back together. We give thanks for all who've reached out to aid in their recovery. We continue our prayers for the world as Russia continues their aggressive actions on the border of Ukraine. We continue our prayers for everyone impacted by COVID, particularly as the Omicron variant continues to rise. We pray especially for our medical personnel and others on the front line who are receiving no relief as we move from variant to variant. We pray for our unsheltered neighbors and all who are separated from their families this holiday season. We pray for all who've been recently hospitalized or are under a doctor's care. We pray for the family of Jean Miller, whose service was here yesterday. We ask your prayers for the Petrie family, as well as John's mother died this week. We continue our prayers for all who will be grieving the death of loved ones during this holiday season. We pray for our associate pastor nominating committee and our director of Christian education search committees as they may soon discover the persons God has called to serve with us. And we pray for all those with whom we serve to bring hope to Charleston and beyond. The Lord be with you. Eternal God, we pray for the world. Bring peace to our strife-filled lives, in families and among nations, through this baby born in a manger. We pray for the mission of your church, that we may sing with Mary a song of hope, rejoicing in the gift of our Savior and serving as a light in the darkness. We pray as well that in definitive moments we may show the faith and grace of Joseph. We pray for all who suffer. May our lives be claimed by you that we might share in your great work of salvation, feeding the hungry and lifting up the lowly through the power of your holy and life-giving spirit. We pray for your creation. As generous stewards of your abundant blessings, may we safeguard its well-being from generation to generation to your honor and glory. We remember before you those who have died and those who will die today that they may rest with you eternally. We pray for their families, that they may find your comfort and peace, which pass all understanding. Hear now the prayers upon our hearts and minds this day. All of this we pray with gratitude for your eternal love and extravagant grace in the name of Jesus Christ, who teaches us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, God, the source of all good things, has given us what we need. In joyful response, let us offer our gifts, the fruit of our labors and the dedication of our hearts for loving service in the name of Jesus Christ. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the faith of Mary and the obedience of Joseph, that through them, by your grace and the power of the Holy Spirit, we have received our salvation, Jesus Christ. Offering ourselves unto you this day, we rejoice in hope as we wait for the fullness of his kingdom. Bless our lives and these gifts we return unto you, that they may be used for the proclamation of your great joy throughout our world. Amen.
Beloved, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, is near. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.